Hello, this is Joe from Brain Buffet. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to adjust your audio using keyframes. I'm using an example from my Brain Buffet course on Premiere Pro, which I created to prepare students for their Adobe Certified Associate exam. So far, we've been concentrating really on the video and this tutorial, I want to concentrate on the audio. I've also had the system audio turned off so that when I was scrubbing and, and moving around, you couldn't hear it. Now, when I scrub, you should hear that. And when I play foothills of the cascade, you should hear the audio. So let's talk about audio. The first thing I want to do is I want to see my audio a little bit better. And right now I don't need these tracks up here, video track, v3 and v2 so i can either hide them get rid of them or just shift this up so first of all if you right click anywhere here on the track heads if i right click you can see i can delete a track i can delete multiple tracks if i just hit delete track it just gets rid of that one so let me control z and bring that back if i right click and go delete tracks it brings up a dialog box that allows me to choose exactly what i want to delete i can delete just say track video two so that'll just delete that one thing so you can kind of target exactly what you want to delete by right clicking and going to delete tracks because you get the dialog box let's say i want to keep these tracks but i want to shove well, I want to just shift what I'm seeing here in the sequence. So if you put your cursor in between these tracks, you can make the tracks bigger or smaller. You can also put your cursor in between the two, both the video and the audio. It's kind of a little bit mm, thicker line. See how this is a thin gray line. This is a double gray line. When I click here and drag up, now I'm changing the focus, I guess, how much of the video I'm seeing and how much of the audio I'm seeing. So that's, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be able to see more of this. Next, I want to expand these tracks and there's a bunch of different ways to expand the tracks. Come up here to the sequence options and go to expand all tracks. And let me shove this up a little bit more so you can see it. There it is. Expand all tracks and minimize all tracks. That does everything. And that's not exactly what I wanted to do, but let me just show you. See how that expands all the tracks. Let me come back in here and minimize all those tracks. Ooh, that's a little bit small. So again, you can stretch them out like that. I actually like to use a keyboard shortcut. If you just use your wheel on your mouse, see how I'm using the wheel on my mouse and it's just going right to left. Well, if you hold alt down when you're doing this with your mouse, you can make it go vertical. So that's what I usually do. I hold alt down, I put my mouse over the top of a track head and I use alt and I drag it out. So that really makes it easy, a lot easier to work with both the um, rubber band here. So this line is the volume rubber band and to be able to see the waveform. So let me go ahead and I'll zoom back in a little, just there we go. So this rubber band, this line here is the volume. That's the volume of the music and here's the volume of the voiceover. So that allows me, if I go ahead and drag it up, it'll make it louder. And if I drag it down, it'll make it quieter. And it shows me the number or the amount in decibels. That's what DB stands for. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z that. All right. The next thing I wanted to show you is when you're playing this, let's say I play it back now. So you're hearing both of those. Sometimes you just want to hear one or none. So mute the M button here. If I hit that and I play it again, nestled in the foothills of the casket. Okay. You don't hear any of the music. If I hit M on this one, I don't hear anything because I'm muting both of them. So mute is basically kind of like hide. Uh, one thing you want to make sure that you don't do is uh, I've muted this. I'm working with it. And then when you go to export, you forget to unmute it. So always check that it's not muted before you go to export. Now what's solo? Solo is kind of the opposite of mute. Solo says, Hey, you know what? Let's say I have 99 tracks and I just want to hear this one. You wouldn't want to have to mute all 98 of the other tracks. You just want to be able to hit solo and then it just plays that. So now with solo selected, it should not play back the voiceover. Let's hit, hear it. There we go. All right. So solo is basically 
hey, I just want to hear this one thing. And then we've got our voice over record. Now, if you really stretch this out, you could see this, this audio one. And if you right click on it, you can rename the track. So let's go ahead and tr let's do this. Let's rename the first track to music. All right, let's rename the second track to voiceover voiceover. Now this is not always necessary. Do I usually do this? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't depends on the complexity of the project. And if I'm working with somebody else, knowing how to do this is really important, especially when you're preparing for an exam. So practice renaming um, both of these tracks. Next thing I want to do is I want to adjust the volume so that the, the music doesn't overpower the voice. So we're going to zoom out. I'm going to use fit and window and I want to show you a couple different ways. So on this project, we're going to use keyframes and on a different project, we're going to use kind of the auto settings for doing this. So on this first one, I want you to be able to do it manually to create keyframes. Let me zoom back down a little here. Alrighty. So here we go. We're going to create a keyframe here before the voiceover and then another keyframe after it. So to create keyframes, you can use the pen tool. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the pen tool, come over here and click. I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see there's the diamond. That's where I just clicked here and boom, these are keyframes. So you want to do them in pairs because I want one here to set the volume at hundred percent and another one here to lower the volume. If I now grab the selection tool, you can either move the keyframes by clicking on the individual keyframes, or you can move the entire line here or volume rubber band on either side. Let me go ahead and control Z a couple times just to get rid of that. Okay. So I've got my two keyframes here and I want to move down on the timeline. So let me zoom back out. And I want to put two keyframes here because I want the volume to be 100%. Drop down from my voice and then come back. Move a couple keyframes here. You can actually move to a specific spot. And if you stretch this out enough, you'll see the keyframes. So these are the controls for the keyframes show and hide keyframes. This lets you jump between the different keyframes. And then this control lets you add a keyframe. So I'm going to add a keyframe right there, move a little bit further down and add another keyframe. So now I have all four of my keyframes. So that's one way to make audio keyframes. One is with the pen tool. One is with this control. A third way I like keyboard shortcuts, you know, so if you hold control down, it turns into the add keyframe on a Mac, that would be command. So you can add as many keyframes as you want, just holding control down. Now, if you, if you make a keyframe and you want to get rid of it, just select it, see how it's blue and press the delete button. Boom. They're gone. Okay. So we've got the four keyframes and now we're going to click here on this middle bar, the rubber band, and we're just going to bring it down and you'll notice how it's a hundred percent here, hundred percent here. And it just automatically drags or dips down. So let's try this. Let's play it back. The Snoqualmie Valley is a small community. Awesome. So that's really an easy way to adjust your volume. Sometimes when you're fading something out at the end, you'll add a couple of keyframes. I'm going to hold control down, keyframe, keyframe, and you'll drag that down at the end. So it'll fade out. The audio will fade out. So try that. Try adding a fade at the end. So that's one way to control or work with your audio. And that is using keyframes and we call that the volume rubber band. So you now know how to expand tracks, work with tracks, rename tracks, add keyframes, and you've got your audio dialed for this project. Hi everyone. Thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development and click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.